Hey, welcome uh, to the Dave and Rich show. Feels weird being back uh, in this. Uh, thank you, Fred, for filling in while I was gone. Thank you again for your prayers and and things. And so uh, we're going to jump right in, I'm sure, with some jokes. I, I can't even imagine. Uh, so we have to start with this one. Uh, what is a missionary's favorite type of car? I don't know. You a go? Con- a convertible. Convertible. Oh, <laughs> Remember the old Yugos? I thought it was a Yugo. Yugo. There we go. Remember those? It should be Yugo. We go. But... There you go. All right. Uh, why didn't oh, they no, play no cards on the ark? Why didn't they play cards on the ark? I don't know. Noah was standing on the deck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> At least I didn't have to explain that one. <laughs> no, that, that one I got. I, yeah, the convertible. I, I, was, I was short on, so... Uh, so we went into kind of, uh, f- we finished up the series on four chair yep. discipleship and it kind of reviewed a little bit, but we walked into roadblocks and you focused on two. So the external and then really the internal mm-hmm. um, heart battle. Uh, which one do you think is the biggest one we should be uh, wary of? Um, I think the internal because, look, the external is going on and... Um, I think I think we need to acknowledge it, and 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 to me the external. This sounds crazy at first. The external is encouraging to me. Okay, you got to talk into that one a little bit. The external is encouraging to me because it does define why discipleship is difficult. It does okay. define why church is hard. It does define why life is difficult. Um, the internal is where you and I are stopping the process because of we haven't died to ourselves, or we haven't grown in an area or because we're struggling with something. And that's discouraging um, in, that, in that sense. So to me, uh, the internal is, is the bigger um, fight. Now, spiritually, I'm going to fight a battle and I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and I need to do that. But the only way I'm going to get there is by dealing with those internal things first. I, I do agree. I think the interesting thing on uh, the external battle is um, the external battle is only there if if we're doing well internally. Right. Right. Uh, there's no need to start a battle if you've already won the, the war. Right. No. I mean, Satan is. If you if you're a believer, there's nothing Satan can do about that. And so, if you're sitting in a church and you're not doing anything and you're not making disciples, Satan's going to leave you alone. No, Why, he doesn't need to change you. Actually, he doesn't no. want to change you. No, he's happy with you. Yeah. Yeah. I did love you had this statement that Jesus treats Satan like he is real and impactful. So why do you think we live lives that don't want to see that? Well, I think we, have, I think we fail on two extremes with Satan. Either we give him too much power okay. and, and significance in our life. Or we ignore that that is happening. And both are out of context. Satan is real and his demons and the spiritual warfare is very much going on. Um, but Jesus, you know, said, I see Satan fall. You know, he uses the term in the Gospels uh, dealing with his death and resurrection and what's about to happen of Satan falling. He uses, the, we, we hear the same term in Revelation. And, and so in a certain sense, Satan is, he is beaten but not defeated, if that, if that makes sense. Yes. And so. Doesn't quite uh, know it's done. Yeah, it's not completed yet, and it's in the process. And so we have to be careful not to give him too much power, um, but at the same time, ignoring the fact that this is going on um, is, it doesn't make any sense either. And we live in a world that likes to uh, vilify Satan, right? If we look at the movies, we look at the comments, and, and just even like that horrible horror culture that's out Mm -hmm. there, right, the dark culture that's there, uh, it creates this huge image that is scary and gets your attention. And is that real? Yes. But I don't think that's the reality we live in. To me, Satan's much more in the mundane and the small things to impact my life. And sometimes even the the presentation of a good choice, even though God's got a better one in front of me. Right. He's been doing this for a long time, right? And, um, I think if you haven't yet read, read screw tape letters, I think it's uh, really impactful. But C.S. Lewis screw tape letters. But the idea here that that Satan has had years and years to master this craft of deception. Yes. Um, and when we look at at Satan, 
um, we see that he's a deceiver, uh, he's an accuser, uh, he's a tempter, and, and lying is his native language. And so that's who, what's that, that's who the Bible portrays him as. And so um, he, he has that role and he's continuing to, and discipleship is not, is one of his greatest battles. He doesn't want to see that happen. Right. And he uses the same technologies we do, right? Sure. He uses scripture yeah. in Jesus' time. Yeah. He uses yeah. the same virtual right. lenses we're trying to engage people with mm-hmm. now like, against us. And yeah. So we just have to be aware. All right, so into the internal, and you talked about um, we have kind of these two uh, internal battles, my heart and your heart. Um, try to, like, dig into the difference there a little bit more. Well, look, one of the things I said is that discipleship is both individual and it's corporate. And so... Um, individually, what stops me from discipleship is my heart. Corporately, what causes us to fail at discipleship is not just my heart, but it's our heart. And so individually, I need to die to myself. Corporately, we need to die to ourselves. And when we don't die to ourselves corporately, then we put up too many hang-ups for people moving chairs. And when, they, when, when we have people coming in and, and, and maybe they come into our church and they're in chair one, two, right? They're believers, but, you know, eventually they, they just, they get stuck because there's not a place for them to move up. And it's because of our heart because we're not giving up a position so that somebody else can move into it. So I, I think corporately our heart is an issue individually, my heart is an issue. I agree with that. I think uh, you walked into worry, wealth, and want. Uh, love, of course, we have to get into some alliteration. You did twice with some P's in there as I well. I had some P's in there. You. So thank you. Um, but we rolled this up to really, there's some control issues we have here, right. right? Yeah, the worry, want, and wealth is right from Dan Spader's book and that Mark chapter four. Uh, so it's his alliteration. Um, and, and I think that Spader would say, and, and I would agree, that early on in discipleship, um, we're going to face, we need to take our, those that we're discipling to Mark chapter 4. And we need to deal with these issues because they're the biggest issues, at least in our culture, I think, that we deal with. And, and you, you and I have been through discipleship, uh, four-chair discipleship with a few different people over the time. Mm-hmm. And I've sat down at that point in the book, and I've said, okay, so worry, want, or wealth, which one do you struggle with? And I've, I've never had somebody go, yeah, I don't think, I don't, I don't struggle with any of those. They've, <laughs> they've all said, well, every group that I've been in, they've said, uh, well, you know, I struggle with this, but, you know, this one's a close, close second. <laughs> yeah. Right, and I think these are ones like we would, and the world is going to love to tell us, you can control your worry, mm-hmm. um, deal with anxiety, deal with depression, deal with um, control over the future. A- anyway, right? Same thing with wealth. Hey, you can manage your wealth. You can take care of this. Mm-hmm. It's yours, not God's first. And the same thing with wants, right? Yeah, God's wants are good, but so are yours. Don't forget them. So, I, I mean, I don't want to be over simplistic. And I've quoted this verse so many times over my 12 years here. Uh, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Worry. Man, worry is a sign that I'm not trusting in the Lord with all my heart. Wealth. Wealth is a sign that I'm not trusting in the Lord. My, my pursuit of that. Um, that I'm not trusting that God will care for that next thing. I want to I build a bigger barn in case something happens. And, and you know, what the, the parable there is, well, God's going to give an account for, you need to give an account for your life tomorrow. You know, so that barn's not going to help you any. Uh, want. Want is that thing where I just, I'm going to feel happier if I have that, or I'm going to feel happier if I'm going to have that. I'm going to feel happier if I trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understandings. These things are not going to bring, it yeah. all kind of falls into that. And so I think part of discipleship, and this is, this is true for all of us as believers, we need to trust in God more every day and, and believe in his watch care and his power in our life. And that's hard to do. That's a step of faith. Yeah. And that's the piece that people want to hear. Yeah. Uh, I just finished reading a book about uh, transgender transformation. Mm-hmm. And it talked about this path of, of seeing a new identity in a surgery in this next thing. 
And once that moment was held, then this, they thought was gonna be the mountaintop in the, in the beginning of this new thing, then just leads to, oh, that actually didn't fill the hole I was no. looking for. Mm-mm. And so I think as, as we're real with people and in, in sharing our worries, wealth, issues, and wants, that's where then they start to open up and see, oh, yeah. you know, like I recognize the holes we have that, that although they're unique to you, that hole is not. That's, that's us trying to fill God in. Right, and so Satan does this thing in our life where we, we think if I have this thing, I'll be happy, um, but I can't really afford it, so I, I stretch myself financially. I put that on a credit card or whatever. And that thing doesn't bring happiness. And not only does it not bring happiness now, but now it's going to bring stress into my life because uh, I have a monthly payment on it. And I don't, I mean, on, honestly, in my younger years, I don't know how many times we've done that. We don't have a credit card now. Um, we, we've chosen to, to live with that one. And, and um, I, I can't tell you, I, I was just saying to some, somebody in a discipleship group the other day, I was just saying, you know, it was a problem for me in my early years. We got rid of it. And I don't want one again. I, I know that we wouldn't, in, in my mind, I know I wouldn't do that again. We but, like to think we can. But, uh, well, yeah, thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> but I love, I love, love, love not living under the stress of waiting for that bill to come. Oh, yeah. And I don't, I don't, ever, I don't ever want to bring that back into my life. And I can agree. I, I can look back the number of arguments or stressful oh, situations yeah. <laughs> or worry about, uh, is it going to be on this bill or next bill? Yeah. Like, when do I get When do caught? I have to have to give that discussion? <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Yeah. And so where does this fit us in the reality today? And I think uh, there's this question out there, right? We're, we're looking and trying to understand our future as a church. Mm-hmm. So and we, and God wants his presence here in Hillsborough. Absolutely. He wants his presence here on this corner. So as we look at we being part of his plan, is this an evil thing we're dealing with? Is this a heart thing we're dealing with? Mm. You know, again... Um, obviously, Satan doesn't want us to be successful uh, on the corner of Second and Hillsboro, um, and so as long as we're, you know, and I, you get, we're making really big decisions, and and I, I understand that. But the more that we're infighting between ourselves, the harder it is to be outside no, because who yeah. wants to be, yeah, be called wants into to be. conflict? Now, the heart issue, personally. Um, again, um, what is it I'm willing to give up and sacrifice for the kingdom of God and and that's, that is hard. And I, and, I, and I understand that. I understand the discussions in it. But God does want us to be involved in our community. Um, and, I, you know, I think over the years that I've been here, 12 years, there's so many different things uh, that we have tried. You know, we had the, the connection with the downtown association that you and I were working for a number of years. Uh, we had the connection with uh, the school uh, up on Lincoln uh, we've done stuff with Love, Inc. We've done things with, um, you know, internally here, whether it was the, you know, the, the um, Harvest Festival or different. We, we've done many different things over uh, the years. We've, we've made efforts. Um, where, where, you know, we have failed um, is to be a consistent light for a long period of time in one of those things. Something always ended up killing that, whether it's the volunteers we needed or the heart that we needed or the leadership to keep driving it. Um, and so we started well, um, but we haven't continued in those things. Um, and sometimes, you know, you can see the external things. I mean, the, the downtown association fell apart. That was, uh, that was nothing uh, on our part. No, and you got to remember, right, when good things start to happen, evil mm-hmm. bring, bring comes up to, right. to fight against it. And, yeah, our hearts are going to get called to continually be in this process all right, because we're going to find one hard issue and another one's going to pop up because yeah. it's, that's the way we're made. Well, I mean, not, that's the way sin has impacted us. I mean, over the years, if we could take um, half the time that we have spent as a church talking about what we could do and what we can't do and actually doing something, we would have been successful. Right. And that's the reason why for kind of the last few years we focused on reconciliation mm-hmm. is if we don't put to rest those historic sure. struggles and those historic heart issues, we will only get back to those. Yeah. And when problems come up, right, we go back to those hard issues, you know, um, and it, that's unfortunate. And, and um, you know, I know that there's been, been, been hurt and we want to keep moving towards reconciliation. Um, but our heart, I think that you and I are on the same page, our heart um, is to see disciples made um, in Hillsboro um, for our church on the corner of 2nd and Lincoln to 
grow and be vibrant and for us to see um, what we've been trying to reach for a long time, which is really multi-generationals working together uh, for the kingdom of God. Right. And this is leading us into our, our next study through Zephaniah, <laughs> right? Uh, the day of the Lord and this idea that, uh, and if we haven't noticed in the world around us, there is something going on, God getting our attention that says, hey, you should be busy and you should be focusing on the important things. And, and that's the idea of the day of the Lord. There's judgment coming, whether eminent or in the future. Yeah. Uh, all we can say is day by day we get closer. And uh, we, we are called to respond, and our heart should be for those who don't have that relationship. Right, and, and we're going to see is the day of the Lord is, the, the, the judgment is now and to come. It's both. Um, the day of the Lord is, is both something that Israel experienced in the past and God is talking about in the future. And I think that we need to live, right? So we, we did this whole thing about Satan at the beginning of this, and we said we need to live in the reality that there's a spiritual battle going on. The second reality that we need to live, on, live in in order for discipleship to be successful is the fact that we're going to stand before God and give an account, and, and eternity is on the line. Not, not in the sense of we're saved by faith, not by works, but there, for some people, eternity is on the line on what we do. And so we, I think the point of the day of the Lord and the judgments in Israel is that we're supposed to live with the end in mind. Um, which is what we're going to begin talking about this Sunday. So we encourage you to uh, continue to follow along and mm -hmm. continue to enjoy these shows. If you have questions, and we fully hope uh, there'll be questions in Zephaniah and what oh, this goodness. looks like, yeah. um, challenge, uh, challenge him, challenge us, uh, and continue those questions. We, we want to continue to grow as a church and reach our city of Hillsborough and those who desperately need the light of the gospel. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, I, we have a lot of fun with this. I hope that you enjoy it as well. Uh, join us uh, for Zephaniah. And I, I'm going to start on Sunday with telling you why we're even covering Zephaniah. <laughs> so, uh, and so I, I hope it's, it's impactful to you. So we'll see you on Sunday. God bless.